for part two. This is where we left off last time. This is about four hours after 2K in, and the black finish looks absolutely amazing. You see those graphite flakes of paint in the beautiful black paintwork. It's looking absolutely amazing. We've got a couple of specks of dust, but we can soon sort those later on. Very happy with this finish, apart from that little fingerprint I just wiped on. There we go. Wipe straight off. Um, so that can go back in its box and cure for seven days along with the wing mirrors and the side pieces as well. Meanwhile, we're going to go back to the part we were dealing with last time, which is all the photo etch, which have been mounted for primer, all the resin parts have been mounted for primer as well, and their applicable colours. So these are all going to be interior colours, so they're on their own little stand. All the photo etches there as well. That on the photo etch primer and then it's subsequent color and we are ready to go a few hours work there as well as the window wipers which i know are the bane of everybody's life and here we go in the booth we've got some mr servicer 1500 black uh iwata hpch airbrush and a couple of coats of primer on every part so um i know a few people say you don't need to prime these parts but primer is the base for the paintwork and again preparation is key the better the job you do here, the better it'll look overall. So I prime everything. So just a couple of coats of this. Starting off with a light dust coat and a little bit of a heavier one. We'll pop it back on a stand for five minutes, come back and add another coat. Same one all the other part as well. Add the lights, just getting in all those angles and recesses. Like I said, it's my water HPC8. It's a 0.35, I think it is, airbrush. No, it's a 0.3, sorry. And we're at 18 PSI. Uh, on all the bigger parts, again, we're primary Mr. Service of 1500. I'm just painting everything up nice and carefully until we get a nice, even primer on everything. So, not a huge amount of parts to prime. Um, it's quite a part, low count kit, this low part count kit. Uh, we've got the interior, which we're going to prime in black because we're going to flock in black and paint some Napa Black Pro Scale leather in there as well. So just building it up nice and slow. And then same on all the other dashboard parts as well. Like I say, not a huge amount to do, but we've got them all batched into their colours. So that stand there is all primed in black. Um, these are all getting primed in Pro ProScale's Photo Etch Primer, which is a brilliant primer for Photo Etch. A lot more resilient than standard primer. Um, it's not too thick, so it doesn't fill in all the details on the grills or any surface detail on the parts. Works absolutely perfect. A couple of light coats of this. Dries near enough instantly. You can paint over it near enough straight away. Really good stuff. If you've not tried this, give it a whirl. Like I say, a couple of light coats does the trick perfectly. And the same on the brake discs as well. So work your way around, a couple of light coats, job done, nice and simple. So we've got these parts to do, we've got the window wipers to do as well. So a couple of coats on each one, and they're all done. Right, with everything primed up and being allowed to dry for a couple of hours, we've got some Tamiya LP5 semi-gloss black. This is my go-to color for anything that isn't uh, a color that ProScale makes. It's a great semi-gloss black, I've been using it for years, and it's a nice trim color for the interiors of cars and for running gear and what have you. So again, several components are going to be painted in this color. We've got some brake caliper yellow to do. We've got carbon discs to paint uh, and some metal to paint on the lights as well. So it's a case of going through all the parts, a couple of light coats on each until we're done. As simple as that. So the photo etch parts we photo etch primed earlier, they go in LP5 as well couple of light coats. Now on the photo edge, make sure you get all the angles. Because you're doing grills and recesses, um, they tend to kind of need the paint at an angle to get right in there. So I always spray directly on and then spray at an angle. For all the interior parts that we're not doing clay leather, we're going to do in Pro Scale Napa Black. So a couple of light coats of this, building up nice and slow. We'll give this a flat coat later, make it look a bit more realistic and like leather. Steering wheel gets the same treatment as well. So that's that. And then on to our brake cal uh, disc, sorry, which are going in Pro Scale Carbon Ceramic. So a couple of light coats of this, again, through the CR3 Revolution. This is my metallic airbrush. I have a CR3 just for metallics. And a couple of light coats of this gives an absolutely brilliant 
carbon ceramic effect to the brake discs. Builds it up nice and slow. <clears throat> there we go. Absolutely brilliant colour. Looks absolutely phenomenal. Like I say, nice light coat to the key here. Don't hose the paint on. You don't be putting any of this paint on wet. It goes on in nice light coats. Build it up slowly until you're happy. Now, the interior colour I've chose for this is a brand new leather colour from ProScale Paints. And it's called Clay Brown Leather Colour. Now, this is going to really pop with that uh, black exterior. Uh, that and the black Nappa uh, interior is going to look great as a nice colour combination. So, a couple of coats... Probably about three or four like coats of this building it up. Uh, these parts are all primed in Tamiya Grey Primer, so the coverage is quite well. Uh, you could prime them in black, but it'd take a little bit longer to get the paint coverage down. So that's why I put everything in their applicable colours, so I can prime them in the right colour um, for painting. Seats as well, beautiful seats on this, really, really nice. Uh, we're going to do the seat uh, backs black on this, we'll do that later on. Did contemplate carbon them. We are going to add some carbon to the interior, but they're a complex shape. And for what you can see on the car, uh, I just deemed it not worth doing. So we're going to brush paint them later on with some Vallejo model color black. But this color, absolutely beautiful leather color. Like I say, we're going to dull it back with uh, some dull coat later, add a bit of a dark brown wash to it, and just bring them alive a little bit. And they look great. What a beautiful color that is. Uh, it's really going to go with the uh, black exterior. So several parts to do. Like I said, we are going to add some carbon to this. We're going to carbon the door cards. There's a center console binnacle that will be carboned. Uh, the center section of the dashboard will be carboned. And I'm going to add some carbon uh, decal to the steering wheel as well. So hopefully it will break up the uh, interior a bit. Make it look a bit nicer. But yeah, great color. Very happy with this one. And uh, now we've got brake caliper yellow. For surprise, surprise, painting our brake calipers. So they were primed in white. We're going for yellow on this. So obviously, because it's a Ferrari, we have yellow badges. Ferrari is one of the signature colours on Ferrari. Uh, yellow is a signature colour for Ferrari. And I thought these would look well in the raised uh, bronze wheel against the black body. Uh, did contemplate doing them in different colours, but I settled with yellow. And after seeing the end result, I'm happy I did. Again, just a few light coats, getting all the angles. There's lots of angles on these brake calipers because there's lots of little recesses and nooks and crannies. But just build it up slowly. A couple of light coats. No need to spray it on heavy. Now, no decal supplied with the kit for these, which is a bit disappointing. No Ferrari logos. So we're going to add some... I think I'll put AP Racing on these um, just to give it a bit of detail. If you don't look too close, you can't see what it says. And there we go. With a couple of coats of that done. We've got beautiful yellow calipers. Now the seats. First time using this wash. I've had this wash for ages. I've got a dark brown and a uh, light brown. So I think they're going to complement the clay coloured leather well. So this is the dark brown. I'm just going to add it to all the recesses and all the panel lines and nooks and crannies. We'll let it dry for half an hour or so. And uh, wipe off the excess. And it just accentuates the seats. And it flows really well on the Pro Scale. With it being an enamel base uh, wash as well, it doesn't react with the uh, lacquer at all. So you can let that dry. Get some odorless spirit, mineral spirits from Santador, Windsor & Newton. And it'll wipe this off lickety-split with no problems at all. And even just doing this brings the seats alive. It just adds depth to them. I always say if it hold a wash, give it a wash. And there we go. Same on the dashboard as well. Not as many recesses on this, but literally I just chucked a wash in anywhere I could. We'll add some detail to this later on. And the calipers. Like I say, no decal supplied. So I've got a nice little stash of brake um, caliper decals. So standard decal procedure, the paint's dry, it's been dry for a couple of hours. Get them off the back and paper with water, get them in place, get the moisture out from behind, and we're using the ultimate decal solution, strong, straight to the strong on this. I know the strong reacts well with the hobby design decals. Actually, they're not hobby design decals, I forget whose decals they are now. 
And there we go. We've got some Santador on a cotton bud, just a little bit. And we're just going to wipe off any excess wash. Now, while the enamel doesn't react with the lacquer, you scrubbing really hard with a cotton bud could burn the paint off. So don't go at it like a madman or mad woman or mad person. Just scrub at it gently. Well, don't scrub at it. Wipe it gently until it comes off. And what you'd be left behind with is just a little bit of depth left on the leather. It completely transformed these front seats. It just gives them that bit more of a realistic look. And once we get them matte coated and the backs painted on the back, uh, the black painted on the back, uh, these are going to look quite good. Not too bad. Now, they're not the best finished seats. They're a little bit rough on the inside of the bolsters. Um, it's just the nature of this kit. It's just a not as finessed a finished kit as the newer ones, but it's still a good kit overall. And I still had real good fun building it, which is the important thing. There we go. Our lovely wheels. We've got our tyres in place now as well. And we're going to give them a quick wash. We've got some black Tamiya panel line wash this time. And we're just adding it to the centres where we've got the road wheel nuts uh, and a little bit of detail right in the centre. We're just going to add it. Now, sadly, these wheels came with holes for tyre valves. I didn't have any. So I'll have to get some out them at a later date. Uh, it's a real shame they didn't come with the kit. Quite disappointing, really, that the holes are in the wheels and they don't come with the kit. Uh, we've let the wash dry a little bit. We're just wiping off any excess. And again, it just adds a little bit of depth to the wheels. Makes it look a bit more realistic. And then for the centres, we've got some... Uh, now, what colour is this? This is LP62, or 61 it is, actually, which is the metallic grey. And using a cocktail stick just to do the uh, wheel nuts. Um, again, different colour. I could have done them black, could have done them silver. And I thought, you know what, we'll do them a dark colour just so they blend in. Now, these MSN Creation stickers are fantastic. You can get these from their website, MSM. So Mike Sierra Mike Creation. Uh, they sell lots of these for different badges. And these are like 3D effect bubble stickers. They are literally stickers. They peel off and stick in place. Self-adhesive. And somebody did ask me, uh, in fact, it was, uh, a, yeah, Paul asked me, a few people actually asked me, to be honest, uh, why hadn't I put the badges on the Ferrari before I 2 k it, uh, the decals that come with the kit? And this is why, because I have all these here, and these look so much better than the decals because it is a physical 3D badge. So that's, what, that's why I didn't add it, if anybody's wondering. And they just look amazing. They really do add an extra depth to the model. And there we go. Look, great looking wheels. Nice bit of depth there. Poorly finished on the inside. If I'd known that, I'd have sanded them. But I'm, I've been spoiled. I've been spoiled with wheels uh, from new kits that don't need finishing. So going forward with these older ones, I've only got one more old one to stash. It's a 488 GTB. Is to check everything. Now, we've got our discs and the resin disc center as well. We use some, some Tamiya Craft Bond to glue these in place. Just get them all lined up. Get the appropriate size for the appropriate disc. Fronts are generally bigger than the backs. And we get those all glued in place. And then we've got the center hub, which I've sprayed the outer side in LP5, leaving the back in Burr PE. And then these are bent over. And this gives the detail for the center of the hub. So a quick test fit there, just making sure everything fits in place fine. And then with a little dab of CA glue, we can glue this in place. My lovely flocking assistant, Hannah, has been flocking the interior of the car. It needs a few more little touch-up, but she does a fantastic job. Uh, I will do a video at some point on flocking. I just don't do it myself because it ends up everywhere in my cave. With all the wash dry on all the uh, interior parts, we've got some testers dual coat. Now, somebody did say the other day about Tessa's dual coat. It's just like Tamiya uh, flat clear. It's not. It's so much better. Uh, I even tested out one of the seats, and the Tamiya stuff was crap compared to this. Tessa's good dual coat is the OG of dual coat clears. Nothing I've used beats it, uh, personally. I'm lucky to have two bottles of it. You can't get it anymore, and I have barely use any on a model, so it's going to last me for years and years and years. And on leather, it just dulls it back, it takes that shine off, and makes it look a lot more realistic, in my opinion. So everything's just getting a light coat. It doesn't need a lot at all. 
you can literally see the shine go before your eyes. If you get any muck in there, get it off. Now's your chance. There we go. Yeah, literally the shine goes before your eyes. It's brilliant stuff. It's just a real shame that it's no longer produced. Like I say, I'm lucky to have a couple of bottles. For brake calipers, we're going with gloss. So we've got uh, Mr. Hobby GX Gloss Clear, the UV cut, thinned with a bit of Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner. This has already had a couple of coats on mist coats, and this is the wet coat I'm putting on at the end. And then on the disc where they've been assembled, the PE showing through a little bit. And obviously, you can see the bare PE. So I thought I'll just go over it again with some of the um, carbon ceramic color from ProScale just to make sure it looks good. And it did. It looked perfect. So some CA glue. We can glue our hubs in place. Just a couple of strategic points. And then push it in place and push it down. Hold it for a second or two. There we go. And again, same on the other one. Just be sparing on the two, uh, the uh, super glue. You don't need a lot. This is just cheap generic super glue. It's the stuff I buy from Amazon. There's a link in the description of the video. And then we're going to put some carbon on the door card. So quite tricky to do this. There's lots of recesses, nooks and crannies. But the real car has glossed carbon on the doors. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a nice looking part of the car. So I thought I'd replicate that. So I've got some Tamiya carbon it's not the weave stuff the normal typical weave it's the spotted type i forget what it's called now um so it doesn't have a directional weave so popping it in place hit it up with the ump strong decal solution let the decal solution go to work use a cotton bud to start conforming it around all the details now again the resin not the best finished resin so it does show through on the decal sadly but we are going to clear coat this later, so hopefully it'll hide a bit of the imperfections. And a little bit of heat always works well. Now, keep your fingers where you need them to be, uh, because it'll tell you when you're getting too hot. Because when it starts to burn your finger, that's where you know you've got enough heat. That's my little trick. And then once it's cooled down a bit, hit it with the decal solutions again to finally get everything conformed into place. And obviously, repeat that for the other side. We've got the little center console to do as well, uh, which is another tricky little bit, but exactly the same procedure. Pop the decal over the top, hit it with the solutions, let the decal solutions do the work, a little bit of heat, and it's job done. So there we go. There's a door card done. Looking good. We've obviously cut it into the panel line as well. We painted it clay leather earlier on. And then the steering wheel. So no real easy way of doing this, so I just did it by eye. So I cut a piece of um, carbon decal, roughly to shape, measured it on the marks on the steering wheel, dipped it in the decal solution, and then popped it over the top, lined it up with the marks, like so. Get it in place. There we go. Once we're happy with it, you can get a bit of decal solution on there. Or the best thing to do on pieces like this is hit it with heat. As soon as you hit it with heat, it'll start to conform around the steering wheel and get itself into shape. And then we can hit it with the decal solutions and keep conforming it until we're happy. So, a bit of a tricky way of doing it. It would have been nice to get the pre cut carbon. Uh, again, I've been spoiled with some of the later uh, Alpha model kits that have come with pre cut carbon. Um, it's a shame when they don't, but it's just the way it is. You know, you're building older cars. You're building this for the subject matter rather than the kit itself. Um, I went into this not knowing where I was going into, and it is a bit of a disappointing kit, but it's a beautiful car, and that for me is enough to want to build it. But the carbon to the center part as well. Quite a lot of carbon on the steering wheel, this. Like I say, loads of good online resources. Look for these cars for sale, and you'll get some great pictures of the interior and the exterior. And they can prove very useful build references uh, when building these exotic cars. So again, just using the brush, get everything conformed in place. And there we go. We can get our instrument decals in. Uh, meanwhile, we've decaled all the center part of the dashboard as well. Exactly the same procedure. The little central binnacle. And these are all the instrument decals going in place here as well. Just three of them on the dashboard. 
go in a place like so. And then we're going to brush paint the back of our seat. So I did contemplate doing carbon, but when I looked at the placement of the seat, you can't see behind the seat really at all. Uh, probably like 90% of it is hidden. And it would have been an absolute nightmare to do. So I opted to do it in Vallejo model color black, thinned to a drop of water, carefully painted, and it looks fine to me. It would look better in carbon, but sometimes you've got to think, who's going to see this, who's going to know? Right, bodywork time. It's been a week. I've patiently waited over the weekend. Uh, it's a week since we cleared it in the first video. We've got a little bit of washing up liquid and some fresh water. We're going to mix that together, so we get a bit of a, a mix. We've got our 3M Trizic pads, which we are wringing out and getting full of nice soapy water. We've got the 3, 6, and 8,000 pads. And what we're going to do is we're going to flat back all the bodywork. Now, I'm going to go a little bit in depth for this, so hopefully I don't bore you too much. Um, because I know a lot of people are asking about this in a minute, about the polishing techniques. And this is quite new to me. This step isn't, because I do this all the time. Um, but the polishing techniques with the rotary tool and the new compounds is a little bit different. So I'm going to run through it. I did it on the Porsche, and I'm going to do it on this one. And hopefully uh, we can get a standalone video out of this as well to release to. Uh, whether it be a Patreon exclusive, I'm not sure. Uh, but I think it will be going forward, definitely. So we're starting off with a 3000 grit. We're going to go around the whole body and just lightly take back the clear car. Now what we're trying to do is any dust spots, which there is only a couple of on this car, we're going to flatten back gradually with each progressive grade of 3M tries of pad. Um, we're also going to flat back to 2K. And what that'll do is it'll make it look less thick, which luckily ours doesn't look too thick out the airbrush anyway. Um, and it'll flat it back to a much flatter finish. And when we polish it up, we'll get an absolutely beautiful black, shiny body. So, like I said, we go with the three, the six, then the eight, drying it off in between, checking imperfections, repeating if necessary, going back to the appropriate grit if needed. Uh, just take your time here. Be careful you don't burn through any edges. And just be careful of where you're sanding. Any raised or edges, um, the paint's always thinner. And it's very, very easy to burn through luckily we didn't burn through a single bit of paint on this and obviously on this car because of the windscreen is surround be aware of what you're doing do not drop that body because that windscreen surround will snap in a heartbeat so we're going to dry the body off with some clean kitchen paper and you're looking for all the areas that are flatted any areas where you had dust or imperfections should be gone now and there we go and then we can move on to the 6000 the next step up and repeat that process so just take your time here don't rush it keep it well lubricated keep that sander nice and lubricated as you're sanding so we've got some menzerna this is the three and a half thousand medium cut um, now we're using our rotary tool with the compound sponges so i need something with a little bit more oomph to it if you get a hand polish i'd highly recommend the ump polish system that's what i've used over the years uh, but for doing it by machine like this, I think the Mazerna compounds are just a bit more aggressive and help a little bit more. So I put a generous amount on all the body and I'm just smoothing it in with my fingers. And I'm doing this for one reason, really, so I don't get flicked and covered in compound. So I didn't wipe that on my leg. Definitely didn't. So we've got the blue medium compound sponge in here. You can get this set off Amazon. They're about £12. They're really good. I'll update my list and add it to it. And using the second speed on this drill, which is very low power, we're just going to gently go around the whole body. First off with this coarse um, compound with the medium compound sponge. And then we'll come back with the fine sponge and the finishing compound from Menzerna. And then we'll come back with some Autoglim Super Resin Polish and another fine pad and give it a nice fine polish up at the end. And this thing looks absolutely fantastic when it's done. So again, be aware of any edges where the paint's always thinner. Uh, you don't want to burn through. and It's easily done. Thankfully, we had no damage whatsoever. Don't press too hard with the sponge because it just flattens out totally. And my tip would be if you do buy this set from Amazon, um, you see the end of mine is black. Uh, it should be yellow. It has quite sharp bits on it. So I put some electrical tape around just to protect it in case I touch the body. But it's just, this is a super fast way of polishing the body up. I've always kind of sworn away from this and always hand polished. But 
this is a game changer. This is an absolute game changer. Uh, the combination of the compound uh, polishing pads and the compounds themselves from Menzerna, uh, they work really well as a machine polish. But like I say, if you're doing it by hand, use the UMP stuff, UMP polish system. It's fantastic. It's very, very forgiving. But like I say, sadly, it just doesn't have the cutting power of this to use with a rotary tool. So there we go. And obviously, if you're using your own compounds, wherever you use, just do it in your own way. And if you want to try these sponges, and if you already do, let me know in the comments what you think. But for me, second body doing them, and it's worked absolutely fantastic. It really has great result. So there we go. Once our section's done, we're going to clean a bit of uh, old T-shirt material. And we're going to just wipe it all down, get rid of all the excess uh, compound. And even just off this single stage medium cup polish, we've got a fantastic shine back already. Really is absolutely beautiful. And it's only going to get better with each subsequent um, polish we do. And again, we move on to the sides and just work our way around the body nice and slowly. Being methodical being careful and gentle and like i say don't compress that sponge too much let it float uh, because all it does it just flattens out and you end up touching the actual holder to the body which we don't want to do so there's a fine line between pressing it too hard and obviously not enough so you can figure out once you use it but just be careful there's lots of little bumps and recesses on this so i've got to be especially careful but yeah, great little set. Works really well for the money. So this little battery power drill, again, a great tool from Amazon. Sadly, my battery dried. Um, I had to go to my Proxon, but luckily the Proxon uh, lower speed matches the medium speed on this one. So it was perfect. Uh, so as long as you've got a lower power tool, I wouldn't use like a, you know, a 10,000 RPM Dremel. Make sure it's a nice low RPM. These Herzo tools you can still get on Amazon. They are brilliant little drills and absolutely perfect for this polishing job. Absolutely perfect for this. Like I say, just take your time, work your way around systematically. Just be careful of those edges. And again, once you've done that section, get your cloth and give it a good clean up. Get all the excess polish off, compound off. And there we go. Right, so we're switching pads. So we've taken the uh, blue one off and we're going to a red, pinky, fine one. There we go. And then we've got some of the uh, polish now from Menzerna. And we're just going to go over it again with the fine pad with a less aggressive compound this time. And again, just take your time. There's definitely a difference in the softness to this. You can feel the difference when you're polishing. There is a, a heavy one in there. There's a heavy, medium, uh, and a fine in the set. I didn't opt for using the heavy, but I might do next time. I might use the heavy on the first compound, the medium blue on the second one, and this on the third. We'll see. I'll see how it goes, but this system works really well. Like I say, just be systematic. Go around. Just be careful. Don't be burning through anywhere. Just take your time build, building it up. On parts like this, the bottom especially, very easy to burn through that thin paint. So just take your time. So like I say, preparation is key. All those steps we took in the painting process have paid off uh, absolutely perfectly here. We've got beautiful paintwork, beautiful 2K, very little dust to clean up in the bodywork because obviously we do prep work in the room as well. Um, and that saves us time here now as well. So those little key points we did earlier make it easier in the long run. So again, clean bit of tissue, uh, t-shirt material, sorry. We'll wipe off that polish. And again, beautiful shine, absolutely gleaming. Yep, looks absolutely phenomenal. There we go. Um, so after the rest of the car is done, with the second stage, we're going to move on to the super resin polish. And sadly, they didn't have a bigger bottle. They only had this litre one, so I got it. Uh, I am joking, of course. I'm just going to apply a small amount, or a rather big amount, to my finger and just rub it in. Again, put it in all the areas you're going to sand. I do section by section. I do the front, the rear, then the sides. 
And I'm putting the polish on here so it doesn't flick everywhere off the tool. So we just rub it in and then get our fresh, fine pad. This is a different one again than we had before. And again, we just go round and polish it up to a nice finish. So this is a very gentle polish now, the Autoglim. And this will give us our final shine. So we're just going to whiz it around. Get all those nooks and crannies, all those angles. Like I say, sadly, it was about this point my battery drill decided to die. So we switched over to the Proxon, which has a foot control pedal, which makes life a little bit easier, actually. And although the tool itself is a little bit more unwieldy, it did the job perfect. So either or will do. Yeah, it did the job absolutely fantastic. So there we go. Like I say, just be careful of Dremels, because a lot of Dremels only go down to like 5,000, 10,000 RPM, and it's a little bit too much for doing this. And there we go. Final polish up. Look at that shine. Beautiful. There we go. Just the rest of the car to do. And we're all done. So, yeah, this is definitely working out well. Um, definitely convert to polishing the cars like this. I've kind of shied away from it in the past, but I think for me, this is the definite way going forward. The combination of the sponges and the compounds, yeah. This is so much quicker and obviously time saved. Yeah. A definite bonus and i think it gives a better result as well so yeah we're just going to work our way around the entire body just nice and slow like i said it's a lot less abrasive of the autoglim polish and also has micro filling uh capabilities as well although they are only temporary uh, so if you do have a less than perfect finished body or even real car in real life it will make it look a little bit better so yeah just take our time here like i said the proxon works well it's about match for RPM with the second speed on the small tool, but it's just a bit more unwieldy. I know you can get a shaft for it. Uh, I don't think the shaft would be that much better. Possibly it might be. I think the little hairs or drill is the way to go. I just need to make sure it's uh, it's charged. Obviously, it's getting used a lot more for polishing uh, than when it's just being used as a drill occasionally. So, yeah, uh, either way will work well. Just make sure the RPM isn't too high. And there we go. Polish that bit off. And just look at that. Absolutely stunning. I am so happy with the black on this car. I was kind of worried through that, oh, I wouldn't get a good finish. But the depth of black, it just looks absolutely phenomenal. And then the final two pieces are the two doors and the windscreen surround. Of course, we're doing all the mirrors and those side pods as well on each uh, compound. I've just not shown it in the video just to save a bit of time. But they are getting done with each uh, application. Like I say, yeah. Polished up to a nice high shine black. So like I say, I think the main thing to stress is just be careful of those edges. Uh, the paint is always going to be thinner on an edge or a raised bit of surface. So like where that door crease is at the bottom, where it goes over, don't spend too much time over that piece. Stick to the flat piece. And you'll be just fine. And obviously, when using the tool, watch the rotary head on any other part because it will take paint off. But I think after a couple of goes of this, you'll get the hang of it. I certainly have. And I think you'll definitely see how much more beneficial it is polishing this way than doing it by hand. So let's see if we get any fellow converts like myself. Like I say, if you've already got this set or using one similar, let me know. Um, let me know your results. Are you happy with it? Is there anything you change? These Menzerna compounds are well and truly worth a go. They're very good, although they're not cheap. I think I've spent about £50 on the compounds and the polish. So definitely an investment. But like I say, saying that, over the years, I've had great finishes with the UMP polish system by hand. I just think for me, this is the way going forward for me. I'll be polishing my cars in future. So there we go. Now, we get to do the fun bit in a minute. Because our 2K is nice and thin, your panel lines don't get filled. So they inherently hold a bit of uh, polishing 
compounds in there. So once we've buffed it all up, beautiful shine. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, we're going to take it to the spray booth and give it a little bit of a jet wash. So turn our pressure to about 30 PSI on the airbrush, uh, a little bit of fresh water, and we'll jet wash all the remnants of the compounds and polishes out. And like I say, just the final step here, doing the wing mirrors and the little side pods. I've done this for each stage. They've been sanded as well. And each, every single one has been polished up. Just be careful that the parts don't get snagged on the sponge and fling them off into oblivion. And there we go. Like I say, load up your airbrush with water. Make sure it's airbrushed and make sure you clean out any lacquer or anything in the airbrush first. If I've had lacquer in the airbrush, which this one has had, I get rid of the lacquer, clean it out. I then put some UMP airbrush cleaner in, alcohol-based cleaner, to clean that out and then empty that and then put some fresh water in and blow that through before I go to the water. <clears throat> and literally, all we're doing is jet washing the polish out the panel line. So I find if you go around once and jet wash it all, it softens everything up and the second pass round will really get rid of everything. You might need to use a toothbrush as well. But this is a very efficient way of removing polish from the panel lines. It works really, really well. And then once we're done, we can dry it all off. Oh, my voice went all funny then. All off. You can dry it all off and then give it a good polish up with our microfiber glasses cleaning cloth. And see just how beautiful of a gloss black body shell we have here. It looks absolutely stunning. So glad I picked this colour. So glad I stumbled across that photo for uh, inspiration. And there we go. This is where we're going to leave part two today. We'll be back for part three very soon where we'll get this beautiful car finished off. We've got a few trials and tribulations to deal with first, but we'll get to those in part three. Thank you very much for watching today, everyone. Make sure you sub to the channel. And a huge thanks to all my patrons linked at the end of this video. If you want to become a patron, this link's in the description below.